Hello, this is Derek from Volition Recording Studios. I hope you're doing well. Today I'll be going over a very useful mixing tip that you can implement on your next mix. And I can guarantee you, if you use this mixing tip, it will help open a new realm of possibilities and a new understanding of how mixing works as a whole. But before we get into that, for those of you that are looking to have your songs mix, or would like to have your recorded tracks repaired and cleaned up to sound professional, whether it's for a podcast, removing a plosum from a vocal line, or taking a hum out of the guitar track, I do offer those services over at volitionrecordingstudio.com. If you're interested, do head over to my website, submit your request, and I'm looking forward to working with you on your next project. Now back to the video. Like making a good movie, which requires a good story, a good set of casts, great visuals, meaning great setting costumes and sound to go with it. Music is no different in that same regard, but the only difference is that there's no visuals to go with the sound. And it is very important for us audio engineers, mixing engineers, whatever the case may be when you're seeing this video, is that you want to be able to see the full vision of the product, of the end product. And every decision you make during that process will help you sculpt out the finer details of your song. So it's very important as engineers to be able to create a very immersive experience for the audience, which is the listeners. So when it comes to visualizing your mix, you want to be able to visualize it in the sense of almost like creating a movie where you want to understand that not only are you hearing these individual elements on the song, but you also want to be able to visually, mentally see, to be able to see this as a dimensional object. So when it comes to explaining how this is all going to fit in, I'll be using a model based off a book I read called the Art of Mixing by David Gibson. He explains how every type of genre, every type of music has a specific model to it, a 3D model, as you can say, where you can be able to discern how close the vocals are, how far the bass is, how, how much of the space is filled up. You want to be able to visually see your mix in that regard. All right, when it comes to building your visual map and visualizing your mix, you want to start first start off with identifying the frequency. So frequency is a fancy way of saying how fast vibrations travel at what rate. And you don't need to overcomplicate the term for it. All you need to understand is that every type of sound there is out there is categorized by either lows, mids, or highs. I'm pretty sure at least you've heard the, these three terms, low, mids, and high. And there are, of course, high, low, mids, high, mids, and the different subcategories of what these big sound categories. But the most important thing you need to know is where do they sit? So when it comes to your mix, you want to first identify where, how high or how low they are. So pretty much when it comes to a violin they are generally higher in terms of the frequency the reason being why is that they travel way faster than compared to a bass guitar or a kick drum they generally take a little bit longer to travel to get to your ear and that's why when you hear a bass guitar you can feel it more so than hearing the actual note so a good instance to be able to tell if something's high frequency is if it reaches to your ear faster then generally that is either mid or high frequency. If it takes longer to get to you, that's generally a low frequency, most of the time. So when it comes to putting that into effect of your mix, you wanna first identify where the lows are, where the mids are, and where the highs are. So by able to do that, you're creating a sense of layering. And that's the first thing you gotta do when you visualize your mix. All right, so the next one's pretty more self-explanatory and that is panning. So it's very important to be able to see your mix as a virtual stage. It's almost like going to a live venue to see an artist where they have a band. So you wanna make sure you fill up 
as much of the space as possible and you want to make sure that every sound can be heard and distinct as that if you have too many sounds on the left center or right it just feels like everything is just has no direction and when it comes to music we want to be able to discern the different types of sounds and give a sense of space and that's what's very important when it comes to panning and this will definitely help you going in the future when you notice that hey maybe certain sounds can be adjusted maybe the guitar that you had on your track maybe it was on the right but then the right is bustling with different types of sounds that you're not able to get a clear sound of the guitar but maybe even just shifting it to just a little bit to the left you're able to hear it more and that's where it's very important to be able to visually see where your sounds are coming from right so the final major factor to building your visual map and visualizing your mix is volume and volume controls how close something can feel or how far something can feel so you want to be able to control and manage your tracks in a way where you focus enough of it that you highlight the most important parts and focus on them but at the same time you don't neglect the supporting elements that make up the song so when you turn up something in terms of volume generally the louder something is the closer it seems to you and when the volume is much quieter it seems a little further away from you so it's like an actual distance of feeling apart. So the most important thing is when you're designing your mix, you want to make sure that you have a good sense of visual understanding of where it should sit, how close and how far, because that will really determine and build the foundation of a song and the immersion, the immersive, sorry, experience of a mix. So every type of genre has their very own unique way of handling dynamics. So I highly encourage those of you that have a specific genre they like or a specific type of music they listen to a lot. Take the time, close your eyes, listen to it and see where they are. Focus on the elements of the song. Let's just say if it was a rap piece, try to pay attention, focus on just the rapping part to see where it's sitting. How close does it feel to you? How far back does it feel from you? the supporting elements let's just see if there's keyboards or synths or whatever is supporting the song aside from the usual rap and the kick and bass that's supporting it like where does the other side elements sit are they close to you are they far from you so that will help you design your own mix going into the future because that's actually how people perceive music now all and right so f i have two examples prepared and they are based off the same mix but i mixed it a little differently I counted the frequency, the panning, and the volume. So I considered these factors into shaping my mix, and I've done it a little bit differently. So have a listen, see what you can come up with. If you could, take a piece of paper, draw it out. If you don't want to do that, just close your eyes and listen to it and see the. try to see if you notice the difference of these mixes. All right, so that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys learned something out of today's content on visualizing your mix. I feel like this is something very important and something very simple that you can incorporate into your mixing sessions. And you'll probably notice a huge difference when it comes to mixing, when you do future projects which involve mixing different genres or maybe mixing a specific way so thank you very much for watching this video and if you've enjoyed everything you saw today and what i have to offer on this channel please feel free to subscribe to this channel for more audio and music related content and i'm happy to take up any ideas you guys may have that if you want me to make a video of i'll be happy to do that all right i'll see you guys next time